la tarde. If you are hearing me now, you should have your, uh, it's because you have successfully chosen English interpretation. We can begin very soon. Welcome to this presentation by the G4 Alliance uh, on America Latin, Latin America and the Caribbean. Today's presentation is on improving access to neurosurgery in Paraguay. I'm afraid I'm not hearing Carolina. We may have lost Carolina, but Richard, if you want to go ahead and begin. Surely. Um, I'm uh, going to introduce uh, Jose Kusley, and he is going to speak about uh, this, the status of neurosurgery uh, in Paraguay and uh, the role that he has uh, been playing uh, in the development of neurosurgery. Uh, the focus is, I think, uh, will also uh, be on stroke and cerebral vascular diseases, which has been something that we have collaborated uh, with uh, Dr. Kusley with the Hospital Nacional de Otagua. And, uh, and all of this began uh, when we first visited uh, Paraguay as early as 2016 as an initial visit. And then we've developed over uh, the years uh, a very strong uh, relationship uh, that really has been driven by Dr. Kusley, who is a remarkably humble individual uh, for uh, all of the great work that he has been doing. My only comment is I wish that we could clone Dr. Kusley and uh, set him uh, up throughout uh, Latin America uh, to lead uh, all of the uh, public hospitals uh, throughout uh, the low and middle income countries. Uh, Dr. Kusley is, uh, is uh, the uh, chief of neurosurgery at the National Hospital in Itagua, and he is the prior, uh, just prior president of the uh, Society for uh, Neurosurgery in Paraguay. Uh, but the most important thing is the tremendous leadership that he has uh, offered um, his capacity uh, to bring uh, neurosurgical care to a remarkably high level. Uh, we began to talk about things that were of greatest importance. He focused almost immediately on certain cerebral vascular conditions uh, because that's where he was looking for some additional mentoring. Uh, so that's why we focused on stroke and cerebral vascular disorders. Um, he, he has a great uh, team of, uh, of neurosurgeons and residents in training. It's uh, been a great pleasure uh, to, uh, to be part of this effort. Uh, he will be presenting actually next tomorrow, no, Friday, uh, in a major conference um, in Boston uh, this is the Mass General Brigham Conference on Cerebral Vascular Diseases, and he's going to participate in a uh, panel discussion uh, during this uh, major international meeting. Uh, so I look forward to that as well, and I only wish he could be in person here in Boston uh, for, for that uh, presentation. Uh, he would make a very, very favorable impression. So... Dr. Kusley, I should let you take over the show here and tell us what it is that you would like 
uh, us to know about neurosurgery in paraben. Thank you, Dr. Moser, for your good words about me. I'm very happy to be here with you today. I simply am going to tell through this presentation and through photos everything we have done with Solidarity Bridge in the National Hospital of Itaúgua, together with the uh, Paraguayan Society of Neurosurgery. Uh, for those who don't know where Paraguay is, it's here in the heart of South America, a very small country with about eight and a half million inhabitants. This is our hospital. Uh, Paraguay is divided very unequally in two regions. There's the southern region and the northern region. You can see that this northern region only has 3% of the total population. 97% of the population is in this southern region, eastern region. You can see this western region is, is very unpopulated. The distribution of the health system in Paraguay is divided as follows. Everything is centralized in the capital city of Asuncion. The largest cities, which are four cities, and another, another region is the Chaco region. There is very uh, little population there, but mo most patients with serious pathologies from these cities always come into Asuncion. The smaller cities only can treat the non-complex pathologies. They might address a peritonitis or something simple. But anything with a, a complex, for example, a cardiac need or a brain surgery, they absolutely have to come to the national capital. Uh, and these are the distances from these different cities to reach Asuncion. Chaco is in the western extreme of Paraguay. You can see it's over 500 kilometers away. It's a, you can imagine how difficult it is to, to cover all those miles to reach Asuncion. The distribution of patients, there are five large hospitals and one very, very large hospital that is only for trauma. It is exclusively trauma. That hospital has 18 neurosurgeons and they don't have residents. They do about 2,000 surgeries a year. Then we also have the institute, the large institute. It's a semi-private hospital. They have a neurosurgery department with 17 neurosurgeons, four endovascars, and seven residents. They do about 1,200 surgeries a year. We also have uh, various private hospitals. They treat more or less maybe a million 700,000 people come to those uh, private places. The rest of the population, about 6 million people, their care is distributed, mo distributed among these five hospitals. The Itagua Hospital that has eight neurosurgeons and six residents, that's where we do about 1,200 surgeries a year. There's also the Children's Hospital, that has four eh, neurosurgeons and no residents. The, even the, the chief of surgery is a, a resident. They do about 
400 surgeries a year. There's another hospital that is linked to the University of Asuncion. They have 10 neurosurgeons and seven residents. They do about 350 surgeries a year. And then there's one other hospital relatively large that has neurosurgery. Um, their chief of surgery is also a former resident from our hospital, but they don't have residents. They have eight neurosurgeons and they do a, a 350 to 400 surgeries a year. So that's the distribution of neurosurgeries among the major hospitals in Paraguay. Now we're going to focus on the Itaugua Hospital. In 2022, we did 1,200 surgeries, 70% among adults, 30% among children. So a, a general breakdown of the types of surgeries we did were brain, brain surgeries, aneur brain tumors, aneurysms, um, traumatic brain injuries, uh, hydrocephalus infections, spinal trauma, and degenerative spile, spine injuries. And in pediatrics, uh, surgeries are often brain tumors, hydrocephalus, infections, and spinal dysrhythmus. And going back to 2018, before we really started working with Solidarity Bridge, this was our surgical table. This is, these are the instruments we had. Those who are neurosurgeons will recognize that this equipment is from 1960s, maybe, maybe 75. It's very a very precarious set of, of instruments for neurosurgery. This was the best we had. It was a very precarious setup. These are a few more of the instruments that we had at the time. We opened up the skull by hand. Very, very few countries, unless they're um, undeveloped, are continue to open brains with a hand work drill. Our instrumentation was very precarious and not in good conditions. There was some, this instrumentation came in 1990 and it was never renewed. This was our microsurgery table. We had a little, one little box, a few little um, tips that the patients had to buy. One clip cost $400 in Paraguay. The patients had to buy it. And that's equivalent to the average um, annual income of a Paraguayan. I'm not sure if it's monthly or annually. I think I think uh, monthly. So an, an average Bolivian uh, Paraguayan it makes maybe four hundred dollars a month. So that's they had to buy each clip at that price. These are some bipolar. This is all we had for microsurgery. And at the time, we did about 850 to 1,000 surgeries a year with this equipment. We had a lot of difficulties. This was our surgical microscope in 2016, when it was more or less new. We brought it from Brazil. It worked well, but it wasn't... It really wasn't what we wanted to have. We got by with it. We struggled with it. We did 800 cerebral aneurysms with this microscope. It was it it fulfilled a lot of needs. In 2017, I was. We came across a flyer 
about a symposium that was going to happen in Santa Cruz, Bolivia. It happened in November 2017. And it coincided that one of our residents was there. We sent him to this course that was that was put on in Bolivia. And we asked him to talk with somebody from Saudi Bridge to see if they could bring that course to Paraguay. We didn't have any intention of beginning a big project with Saudi Bridge. We just were interested in this course for Paraguay. We wanted to have this course in Paraguay because our president, Dr. who had just completed his formation in skull base surgery, and we needed we needed somebody to give a push. So we talked with um, Juan Lorenzo Hinojosa, and we were able to organize. It was a beautiful course, a skull base surgery course. It was Dr. Hinojosa, Dr. DePatri, Dr. Lazio, and the ENT from Bolivia to help carry out the surgery. We did a, a very nice theoretical course, and we also operated we were able to operate four surgeries. These were the first completely endoscopic surgeries we were able to do. Um, and, uh, Patricia Arteaga was the ENT who came from Bolivia to help out. You can see there was a very strong surgeon of the uh, participation of the neurosurgeons in Paraguay. So this was a great course. We didn't really pursue it thinking that there would be a larger project. It was a way to promote doing more um, skull base surgery. And when they came, Saturday Bridge donated a very nice craniotome and some instruments for skull base surgery, for transnasal surgery. Then we were able to begin uh, opening the skull with a craniotome. That was in 2018. Time went by. And then in 2019, at the second Paraguayan Conference of Neurosurgery, we needed, we needed to develop epilepsy surgery in Paraguay. There was no such surgery happening in, in Paraguay. So we wanted to begin talking about it so we could begin to develop a program to offer epilepsy surgery. So I got in touch with Lindsay Doucette of Solidarity Bridge, the director of the neurosurgery program at Solidarity Bridge, and working with Juan Lorenzo Nojosa. They brought an entire team to talk about epilepsy surgery. It was Dr. Carolina Sandoval, Dr. Art DePatri, Mark Piedra, also from the U.S. And we were able to organize a very nice Congress together with Solidarity Bridge. Here you can see some photos of that uh, Congress. A little after that, Solidarity Bridge was able to ship, uh, donate a small container of equipment because before we could talk about epilepsy, we did an asset evaluation of what equipment we had in our surgery department in general. And we realized that we needed a donation uh, that, to cover needs in the entire hospital. 
a variety of instruments for neurosurgery and other uses. And it was a it was a great donation for neurosurgery and for our surgery department in general. And for example, they sent us a, a retractor, a really nice retractor. We had our our skull retractor was really falling apart. They also brought another type, more types of, of neurosurgery instruments and equipment. Here you can see compared to our old tray up at the top, and the, in blue is the new tray. A lot of great equipment for neurosurgery. They also donated a C arm to use in the OR for neurosurgery because our operating room we have eight operating rooms, but the traumatology service, had, had, we had only one C-arm, but it was in another department and we didn't have access to it. So we received a C-arm and we're using it to this day. Now we don't have to be asking any of the other surgery departments to borrow theirs. And here you can see some more of the instruments that they donated to us. A really beautiful C arm that we're using to this day. They also donated a Mayfield to hold the skull for surgery. Before this, we didn't, we didn't have a good way to sustain the head. And with this Mayfield, we're able to really progress a lot. It, so you can see the progress we've made has just been remarkable. Imagine this case, trying to operate this case without having the Mayfield. It's very difficult. Our work was extremely difficult when we didn't have this equipment. And it was also very risky for the patients to do a surgery like this without the proper equipment. Imagine this surgery. On the left, you can see that's how we used to do it. We would improvise with cloth a way to hold the head. And you can see now how we do it. It's much more secure. We don't. We never operate anymore without using the Mayfield. Things got a little stalled um, around the pandemic until November of 2021, when we were hit by the second wave of COVID in Paraguay. We had hoped to bring a container with more neurosurgery equipment and supplies, but when we were hit really hard by COVID, we really needed what we asked for from Solidarity Bridge instead of neurosurgery equipment, we asked if they could send us general supplies for our hospital. They sent us a lot of equipment and materials, PPE, and equipment for the use of the doctors who were treating the COVID patients. It was a wonderful container. We, we needed some basics like beds. I don't even remember everything that was on that container, but it was a really wonderful assistance that helped us get through the entire second wave of COVID. This uh, machines that are still being used today. We had to build like a second parallel hospital to take care of all the patients. 
una especie de hospital de campaña solamente para COVID. So everything you're seeing there, that was all improvised, an addition, an improvised addition for COVID patients. Con COVID. El problema era que ese quirófano no estaba, no tenía nada dentro, era el, estaba en lugar. And they and sent an entire uh, rellenar ese set of equipment to outfit a second OR that we use just for COVID patients. COVID. Y fue así que en este cargamento. And that's how in this shipment, we received everything to entirely equip a new OR. Everything you see here, the anesthesia tower, bipolar or generator, the OR lighting, the bed, everything was in that container. And we actually put a plaque outside that um, OR in gratitude uh, for the donation. And then in December of 2021, we started to meet again to develop a program. We put together this list of what we needed. One theme was that we needed certain additional equipment. We needed to improve certain of our skills in our team. We needed to be able to treat high-grade AVMs, uh, cerebral anastomosis surgeries, epilepsy surgeries. And we wanted to develop a, kind, a tutoring in these pathologies. We also had a serious lack of anesthesiologists specialized in neurosurgery. So in, in, in 2021, anesthesia for neurosurgery wasn't ideal. We really needed someone to come and, and mentor our team of anesthesiologists in the specific sub subspecialty of neuroanesthesiology. And we realized in order to improve our neurosurgery in general, we had to expand our lab. We needed additional uh, micro instruments, surgical microscopes, and this uh, all for training purposes as well. And going back to the topic of supplies that we needed, we needed new Dopplers, uh, aspirators, equipment for all of these different um, specialties. So this was our wish list in at the end of 2021. We developed this plan uh, in this uh, early 2022, thanks to Solidarity Bridge. We were visited by Dr. Deepak Charma, a very well-known specialist. It's his photo. He, you can see one of the one of the Bibles of neurosurgery. You can see he's one of the authors. You can see he wrote chapter 21. He's really one of our one of our mentors, and he was able to come. And Dr. Deepak Sharma was able to come and, and help us with things that we weren't able to achieve. We weren't working together between the neurosurgeons and the anesthesiologists. And after his visit, we greatly improved our, the anesthesia for our patients ever since his visit and his training. When Dr. Deepak came, he, they also brought, Saturday Bridge also brought basic equipment for a training laboratory 
in microsurgery. Microscopes, instruments for the lab, a lot of basic elements for our training lab. This is the photo of the inauguration of the OR. And when Dr. Deepak came that time and Dr. Moser, the Paraguayan Society of Neurosurgery wanted to honor Dr. Moser for all the help he had provided. It wasn't just a donation of equipment. It was a full support for the formation of our team. And in a very short period of time, we were able to uh, improve a lot. So we named Dr. Moser as an honorary member of the Paraguayan Society of Neurosurgery. He's almost a Paraguayan for us now. On that occasion, we also signed an agreement between the Paraguayan Neurosurgery Society and the Catholic University of Asuncion and Solidarity Bridge to habilitate a new space in the university to function as a training lab. We had the materials, we had the microscopes, the instruments, but we were missing a space to set up. So we were able to get that with the university. Also on that occasion, we met with the, the, at the time, the health minister of Paraguay to sign an agreement with Solidarity Bridge and the Paraguayan Public Health Ministry. And this agreement is all about donation and transportation of donations, because as we know, there's a high cost. Shipments themselves, it's a high cost. And we got the uh, health ministry to commit to cover the shipping cost. And we were also able to talk about that future agreement. We also, in April 2022, were able to do a surgery with the participation of Dr. Deepak Sharma. Everything changed after then. Everyone was able to see the difference between a general anesthesiologist and a neuroanesthesiologist. As you can see, in 2022, we were still operating with our own our old microscope. A little after that, we were able to put together the new microscope. Oh, the, the old microscope fell apart. In the middle of a surgery, it just fell apart, and we were left without a microscope. This was a little after Dr. Sharma's visit. We fixed it like this. I don't know what we would do in Paraguay without this um, bandages. We fixed everything with that, but we retired this equipment. It gave its last breath. We sent it to the neurosurgery lab. We're able to keep using it there for our lab. And then shortly afterward, the health ministry brought us a nice size microscope thanks to a project that took seven or eight years negotiating. It took seven or eight years to get this. It was something that was supposed to arrive a lot sooner, but we finally got it in July of 2022. So our spirit changed after that with our new microscope, with our monitor, where we can watch this is how we should be working. This is how we're working now. 
Also, at that time, the health ministry brought us another more equipment that we were missing. This uh, negotiation to get this equipment also took seven or eight years, but we finally got it, include some really good endoscopy materials with monitor, etc. Around that same time, the Catholic University was setting up the, our lab. And we, in the meantime, built our own lab in our office. We set up a nice little lab at the Itagua Hospital. So we have our lab so where any resident can come and practice. And then to carry out these, these practices through Solidarity Bridge, we were able to make contact with uh, a doctor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He provided some talks in two parts. This was over Zoom oh, about the basic microvascular surgery. All the residents of Paraguay attended this talk. After that, we began to practice in the lab in all three hospitals where we've where we've now uh, where we have residents. We now have laboratory spaces in Atugua, in the Catholic University, and in the Hospital de Clinicas. They also had a small lab, so now they all have spaces for residents to practice. So a lot of the objectives that we had outlined at the beginning, one by one, we were meeting these objectives. At that occasion, our C-arm broke down and our, our craniotome also broke. I got in touch with Lindsay at Solidarity Bridge, and Lindsay was able to get the parts that we needed, get the new a new battery, new, new replacement parts that we needed, donated this equipment. And so they had a, donated the equipment in the beginning, and then when we had, when things broke down, they uh, helped us get them fixed. So this is really important. Now here we can go back to our outline of our of our objectives, of the things that we were needing. And as you can see, micro instruments, we solved that, neuroendoscopy. So these instruments we've been able to get. We were able to get um, a training in neuroanesthesiology. We were able to set up our labs with surgical microscopes and micro instruments. And we were also able to access training online. There are some things that are still missing, but a third of what we had been seeking, we have already made progress. So in September of last year, we decided, let's move on to AVMs. We want to be able to operate complex AVMs. We had some planning meetings to discuss various cases that we had in Paraguay. So a professor from Harvard was able to help discuss these cases. We operated uh, three different cases that otherwise these patients were not going to find any treatment anywhere in Paraguay. They would have had to go abroad or would have not received their treatment because there was no neurosurgeon in Paraguay specialized in this type of surgery. We did this really nice surgery. 
Dr. Patel also came at that time and brought uh, his partner anesthesiologist to continue the, the training started by Dr. Deepak Sharma to continue to improve the neural anesthesia training in our hospital. Also brought uh, instrument tech, a very good instrument uh, tech, very charismatic, assisted us as well. And also we had as interpreter and assistant Dr. Silvia Vaca from Stanford. Without her, communication was going to be very difficult. We had a really good uh, visit at that time. As you can see, our OR now has a really nice microscope, really great monitors. And you can see Dr. Patel, who taught us the basic principles of how to operate complex AVMs. These are some photos during the surgery. So it's not only a matter of operating, but we also take advantage of the opportunity to discuss the theoretical, to provide a conference. So Dr. Patel did a, offered a conference for the Paraguayan Society of Neurosurgery. All of those in the photo are our residents. Those are the ones who it really matters that they learn. And on that occasion, Dr. Patel also brought a, a piece of equipment that we were missing for complex AVM surgery. A, a recording system. So this we were able to give to uh, the children's hospital because they, they needed precisely this piece. Solidarity Bridge also brought this machine. Now we don't operate without this Doppler equipment. It has changed how we do surgery. Of course, they also brought us more uh, instruments for microsurgery. They also were able to bring a very large donation from Medtronic, uh, attachments that we needed, trail cars that we needed. We continue to use this donation. It was very important. And then Dr. Barbara Lazio brought us a new handpiece for our cranius home that we needed. Dr. Patel ended his surgery day very tired. These are, this is, uh, these are the moments when we're learning, sitting in the office, discussing cases, where doctor, the doctor is mentoring us. So the tutoring transformed into mentoring. This is the last day photo at the end of the trip. A very nice visit. We learned a lot. We, we filled ourselves with instruments and equipment that we seriously needed. So now you can see to date everything. Now we've acquired other things that we needed. Uh, Dr. Patel brought us a ton of clips, uh, microvascular Doppler, micro instruments we already had, that we had already been brought, continuing tutoring. In, in, we, we learned how to do high-grade AVM surgeries, continued training in neuroanesthesiology with Dr. Grace. 
quedó al 90% la mejoría. We feel that we've improved 90% of what we need in neuroanesthesiology. And, then, and these are additional pieces of equipment that we acquired for our training labs. So you're, gonna, you're seeing here in four years how much we have achieved, how much we have progressed, what, what otherwise would have taken us, us, without exaggerating, it would have taken us 20 years to make this progress. And since June of 2023, again, we proposed doing more AVM surgeries. We decided to start doing extra intracranial anastomosis surgeries. Dr. Moser then decided that we should maybe start working on stroke treatment. So we started to discuss endovascular cases and organize a symposium around stroke care. It turns out that, that our training in the training in stroke care is very expensive. It's it's very difficult for us to provide the stroke care because of the cost of the equipment. We weren't sure if we should even start it, but finally, I realized that we have to do it. We can't keep operating for stroke victims as we used to. That we were doing our the way we were doing it was very precarious. So we received a visit in June of 2023. We organized a, a national conference on stroke. Very good participation. Dr. Patel provided a talk on cerebral revascularization. We all also organized a workshop, a theoretical and practical workshop in microsurgery in the labs with Dr. Abdullah from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, the same one who had done the online courses. He came and did uh, some work with us. And the anesthesiologist offered a talk for the uh, Paraguayan Neurosurgery Society. And we operated four cases of complex AVM of grade three. And we also did a anastomosis. And one with Dr. Telichak from Stanford. We were able to ad address six cases with procedures endovascular procedures. These are surgeries, procedures that we would not have done here in Paraguay. The patients would have had to go to Argentina or Brazil, or they would have continued to have bleeds and might have been fatal. Also for high-grade uh, AVMs, these are activities that we were able to do this year. These are photos of the talks. Dr. Sharma also came. Dr. Sharma. Oh, Joseph Sherman also came. Oh, we called him Clint Eastwood. As you can see in this photo, we had representatives from Stryker, from who traveled from Chicago, and who brought, in addition to a lot of supplies that they donated for the treatment of the patients we operated, they also brought a device to practice endovascular procedures, which is this device here. And we've added this to our lab installations. So now the residents can practice with this 
device. Esta charla salió muy linda, muy This linda. was a wonderful talk. El siempre, eh, cuando viene el, cuando viene el doctor mm. Patel, Always, cuando when Dr. Patel comes, previa a la cirugía o a los procedimientos, donde se le, se lo he always visits the patients and discusses all the pros and cons of every procedure. As you can see here in our office, it's our list of patients. We had seven cases. And then we had other four cases for open surgery. All the patients had good results. You have to remember, these patients would not have received surgery. They would have not been resolved. They are all from very humble backgrounds. These are patients who earn maybe $400 a month. These, these surgeries to a, it would be extremely expensive. One, one little coil for an aneurysm is over $2,000, and you need four of those for a surgery. $10 million or $10,000 they would need. This is something beyond the reach. It's, it, they couldn't pay this. It's unpayable. The theoretical course that we organized, this beautiful course with Dr. Kellis, Dr. Patel, really good participation. In June, they also brought us more equipment and supplies, a box of clips with more than 60 clips. Remember, every clip here costs us $400. They brought us a monitor for our neuro neurosurgery service for the inpatients, and several other things that I didn't include in the slides because their talk was going to be too long. Here on the left, you can see some of the supplies for endovascular procedures that were donated by Stryker. We are still making good use of these supplies. They donated this Doppler. that was so seriously needed. This pushed us years ahead in how we care for patients compared to how we were taking care of patients. And these are some photos from the endovascular procedure. Everyone was very happy. Dr. Moser is there. And here we come back to our, our dream list. Check, check all these things that we needed. We received the Doppler, neuroendoscope, the bipolar. We're now doing high-grade AVM surgeries. Our, our tutor is now our mentor. Neuroanesthesiology, we now have, uh, we received visits from three different specialized neuroanesthesiologists. Now the neuro now the neuroanesthesiology care that you receive in our hospitals is at the level of what you can get in other countries. Thanks to the training of these three visiting neuroanesthesiologists. And our labs now have all the equipment we wanted. So the, the laboratory is now fully functioning. 
And here, so you can see, you can compare what we had on hand in 2017. We had a CT, MRI, a microscope, very basic one, some very basic instruments. We had only a few basic microsurgical instruments. Today, we now have all of these, all of this equipment, a good surgical microscope. What is marked with SB, these are, these were donations that we received from Solidarity Bridge, basic instruments. We have microsurgical instruments that we have, we're fully stocked for a few years now. We have a good Mayfield skull clamp, microvascular Doppler. We have a very good transcranial Doppler and a stereotaxis frame. What we're still next, our next goals are a neural navigation system and an ultrasonic aspirator. We'd like to have these things in our hospital. We're hoping that we can work out an agreement to be able to rent these items when we need them. There aren't a lot of people here who know how to use neural navigation or ultrasonic aspirators. So it's not going to be any good to have this equipment if we don't also have the training and have someone who can operate them. I would like to point out that these are the moments in, in which we really learn. In addition to being in the OR, it's during these discussions and talks, dialogues, these meetings. This meeting down, that was nine in the morning with Dr. Gravija. We were just talking about the little details of our specialties, just sharing experiences of the different specialists. Those are the most important moments. I'd like to, to close, I'd like to recommend this book. Many of you have surely read it. Why countries, why nations fail. To me, this is a book that talks about the story of why some nations, why things don't work. But to me, it was really noteworthy. Two, two elements. Una was nations that work have virtuous cycles and where things don't work it's when there are vicious cycles and in paraguay we were a little stuck in vicious cycles of lack of materials lack of supplies poor results and it just became a vicious cycle because nobody was supporting. So we were we were going in circles without improving. But after 2017, 2018, we were able to start to build a, a micro virtuous circle adding little assets, little helpful parts. And we started to build a, a virtuous cycle. We could, we could pull in a, a resident and inspire them and motivate them and train them. You can decide if you agree with me or not. And I think these individuals here in these photos, there's some special people for us. 
Without them, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Without Lindsay and Maria Eugenia from Solidarity Bridge, Dr. Silvia Vaca, Dr. Patel, uh, Dr. Moser should also be here. And I just want to say thank you. And if anybody has any questions, this is also a photo of my team. And also, thank you to each of them. Together, we organize everything and couldn't do it without my wonderful team. Thank you, Dr. Jose Cusli. Excellent presentation. I'm, we don't have a lot of time. But I'm going to ask Dr. Richard if you'd like to say anything else. Um, no, I, I found it inspiring, uh, as I have found Dr. Kusli inspiring. Um, and and so it, it, it leaves us all with such a sense of accomplishment. And I think uh, this last slide says a lot. Um, do we have, a, I, Dr. Kusli, I, I just, well, first of all, are there any questions in here? I don't see any questions in the chat. Ruben has a question. Ayala has his hand raised. Ruben tiene la mano levantada. Dr. Kusli, eh, Hola. a pleasure so, to, to, to uh, hear you. Thank you, Dr. Kusli. Um, I think I'll, 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 but bueno, eh, Dr. Kusli, antes que nada, eh, a, 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 al mismo tiempo que le damos las gracias, parte de todos We los thank you. De Latina, de, de la on behalf of Caribbean. everyone from the working también, group on Latin America and the Caribbean, eh, eh, como miembro de Operation Smile, sabemos I'm, que I work with Operation Smile. Eh, y, y que hace muy poco eh, pues hizo una partida un, un ser amado uh, al último viaje y, y quiero que sepa que nosotros compartimos eh, su dolor y, y, y enviamos con mucho aprecio mucha empatía we are very grateful for what you do El, la presentación que nos ha dado your presentation es una en is a demonstration of a lot of good things that we see around the world, local colleagues who are committed, who are willing to develop a sustained working team, and over time create whatever is needed to improve access despite all the challenges, which there is a lot of them. This really deserves to be recognized. My question is, we know that the, the circle continues. Have you have you felt that the authorities in Paraguay have been willing to invest? We know that without the support of the public uh, health ministries, we, we can't make progress. Thank you, Ruben. Going back to the vicious cycle versus virtuous cycle, I am certain that, for example, the microscope that arrived and then being able to get the new equipment from the health ministry, they all became part of a, vi a virtuous cycle. The, the Paraguayan health ministry has a thousand problems to deal with. There are still children here who die of dehydration. We, we can't ask that the health ministry focus all of its research 
resources on neurosurgery. It's facing basic challenges, but they are supporting us. And a lot of that support is because of the work we've done. And it just shows the work that can be achieved when people are inspired. The, I should also note that the Paraguayan government changed hands a week ago. So we're, they're paying a little more attention to us right now. Regarding your under, other question, I'm afraid I didn't really understand it. No, I don't know if you could repeat your other question. It's, it's so good to see the positive results. And how do we continue to develop our connection with you to lobby on behalf of our patients? And how can we lobby to, to change public policies? We have to find how to maintain the progress to keep up what we've achieved. We can't, for example, stop having we have to still have a, a, the, the supplies and the equipment that, that we need. We have to be restocked. You might be able to bring us a big gift that might last for six months, but we have to make sure that we keep getting the supplies we need. It's going to be an effort by everyone. And we're going to have to, in addition to us, we're going to have to talk with the people in power to make sure that they continue to help us restock our supplies. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Diane has her hands raised. Has her hand raised? Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm part of Smell Train in Latin America. Congratulations, Dr. Kuzle. What a, a battle you are fighting. I'm here in, in Peru. I understand the challenges in our countries. Congratulations to Dr. Moser for all the assistance for this heroic struggle to fulfill your needs. Day by day, we're, we're resolving our problems. We have to not focus so much on the problems, but on the solutions instead. Congratulations for everything you've achieved. And yes, we have to continue to, I hope you can sustain things to continue to help many more patients in Paraguay. Very inspiring. We're so happy to see how with so little you've done so much. Congratulations. I'm so glad to have been here today. This really motivates us to, to give access to patients. Makes me proud to be in a listen to a presentation like this. Thank you, Diane. I don't see any more hands. So I also want to say congratulations and, and thank you. It's impressive. Thank you, Richard. For those of us who work, for example, in Colombia, where I am, it's very motivating to see that there's really hope to make progress. When, and how we can work together, in this case, with Solidarity Bridge, to see the local work, the, the pushing forward, the long-term commitments. It's very motivating. And it strengthens us to not lose hope where we have so many doubts 
and challenges. Thank you for the presentation. This really fills us with hope to continue to build alliances and the work you've done with all these colleagues from all over the world. If, if no one else has any questions, Bueno, creo que no, no hay más preguntas hasta ahora. No sé si alguien tenga algo más que decir. La charla de todas formas queda grabada para compartir con todos. Uh, this, this talk has been recorded. If you have any colleagues who weren't able to be with us today, we can share it with you so you can watch it later. Richard, I don't know if you'd like to say anything else to close. I don't think I can add uh, beyond what has already been said so eloquently. Um, all that I can say is, well, we'll just work on those next steps, Jose, uh, for the next trip. And uh, and uh, I, I was going to ask a bit about, um, you know, your feelings about a national stroke program. But I realize the politics are uh, are uh, currently on a, being settled. Uh, and I guess until the politics are settled, we're not going to be able to make uh, progress yet. But I am so happy that you came across to the side of the stroke, uh, developing the stroke uh, program. So, but in general, just an incredible job that you do. And as I began at the beginning of this, I sure wish I could clone you and distribute you throughout the world. And it would be a better place if we had more of you. Miren, si, si un uno por ciento a punto, mi perro. Si un uno por ciento de todos los planes que tenemos. If we could achieve 1% of the plans that we put together when we get together, when when Dr. Moser starts to talk about future plans, it looks like we're dreaming. But if we're able to achieve 1% of Dr. Richard's dreams, we're going to be doing better. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone for all your participation. We'll be sharing the link later. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye,